A strong two. I keep thinking of your strong two catchphrase, Sean. <laughs> You're going for a strong two. That doesn't sound right, does it? Hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Boys on Film, where we cast our critical eyes over the latest movies and much more TV shows and all the rest of it as well. I am your host, Phil Marriott. Joining me is my co-host, Sean Vickers. Are you a gamer, Sean? No. Maybe Snake on the Nokia. <laughs> Well, you remember the thrill of the 80s arcade, right? Oh, yeah, babe. Yeah, I get all of that. I used to play Sonic when I was a kid. I'm not now, though. Maybe I could be. Today, we are welcoming a very special guest, Sarah from Popcorn Chat. Hey, Sarah. Hello, hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. We love your channel. We'll put all the stuff in the description box, linking people to what you do, which is similar to what we do, movie reviews and gaming stuff as well. Yeah, I do a bit of everything, films, games whatever you want to talk about we sort of do it on the on youtube twitter that's normally where i um sort of chatting about those things and twitch as well yes do a little bit of twitch on the side as well so i am a bit more familiar with current games shall i say so it's the debut feature from mads hedegaard it was awarded the special jury prize by the dublin film critic circle at the virgin media dublin international film festival in march that is a bit of a mouthful it's about kim cannon arm as he's affectionately known uh, father grandfather laboratory technician. Yeah, I saw this in March of last year, 21, at London Film Festival. I'm a non-gamer. Don't come for me, don't at me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, it tells the story of Kim Canada. He hangs out at this place called the Bip Bip Bar, kind of retro arcade, and he's got all of his mates. He's got his really tight circle of friends, and he has this mission to play a video game for 100 consecutive hours to break. Um, the Guinness Book of World Records for that particular game um, and the documentary and quite jazzy soundtrack uh, follows um, follows that story. You're so right about the soundtrack. I was going to mention that. I'd written notes here. Um, we've got um, Living on Video, Trans X, which I remember from the 80s. Love it. And uh, Iron Maiden, obviously, because he is an Iron Maiden fan. So Love. rockers out there will probably Love. be, you know, the Iron always. Maiden just killing me. I just loves it. The premise is kind of thrilling because there's that challenge obviously because he's got to beat that record and the squad around him have got like sleeping bags on the floor and he's getting coached and people are like you know he has to like build up all of his lives on this game so he can have a nap and as all the lives go down he can still wake up and play and my god it's quite the task for me personally i thought this might have been something specifically for gamers or for people that are a bit scientific and a bit techy. Yeah, I think there's definitely, I mean, I'm very much um, with the new sort of generation of gaming. I've never really, you know, played arcade games as such. So the sort of the technicalities and the love that they clearly have for these games, I was like, kind of bypassed that, to be honest. Yeah, there was some, there was some aspects that were very technical with some like spreadsheets. And I was like, whoa, okay, I don't know what this is a bit about. But Regardless, I still got like the passion through, you know, that they love gaming and friends that enjoy gaming. So I could still relate to that aspect of it. But yeah, it was a little bit the sort of era of retro arcade games wasn't really what I play. So, you know, I was a bit lost on that side, I would say. I'm completely with you. I nodded off a bit on the techie side, on the spreadsheets element of it. But yeah, you're right, because I mean, they're very loyal friends. I mean, they're there's quite a touching moment where they go to visit the the, the gravestone. It's Thomas, I think, isn't it? Their friend who passed away. I think it was mental health issues that he had. Yes. Yeah. So I, I quite like that element because that that was quite um, quite an important side of it. But I don't know. I just I, I feel like because it, it spent a, a while building the backstories of who they were, but for some reason that should have been the most interesting part of it. But or one of the most interesting parts of it, but for me, I don't know. I just got it just got lost on me. Do you know what? I quite like the spreadsheet bits. I think what this film has that underpins it is this idea of loyalty and friendship, right? So there are a group of blokes who have this commonality and a connection, you know. And they're I get just get the sense that they're not outcasts, but they have their own little world and they're doing what they're doing, and it's tight, and there's a lot of love there. Kim's ability to play this game, is it called like Gyrus? So that ability for him to play this game, but to bring his friends in, in what is quite a solitary thing. If you think about playing an arcade game, it's solitary. You are staring at a screen and you are like, it's a, it's a bilateral conversation with a machine. And this ability for him to go, we're going to do something. Kim's going to do this amazing thing because he's so good at Gyrus, but we're going to be involved and we're going to support him. I think is the crux of this film. I think that's the interesting bit. 
the outcome is him trying to get whatever, 100 hours, 50 hours, whatever. And that's amazing, but it feels like a team effort for something that is actually quite solitary. And I quite like that. And I think the documentary maker does a really good job of bringing that across. As you say, like they go to visit their friend who has passed. And I think all of that ties it together. So to some extent, the retro arcade is a character in this, as they are. That's how I perceived it. I'm in the sort of the camp of both of you. I definitely think it felt quite slow when we saw those other you know, friends in the group sort of learning a bit more about their story. That's where I was a little bit disinterested. However, like you say, Sean, it's very relevant because ultimately it is a team effort to get them there. And the fact that they are planning on a table, like this is what we need to do to support Kim to get to that goal. Um, So I guess you do need it, um, but it was the less engaging bit for me and it kind of dragged it out a little bit too much. Um, But yeah, it's, it's crucial. Yeah, mm. absolutely. I'm just wondering if that's down to the running time because it's quite a long documentary for what it's yeah, aiming at because it's 97 minutes. Mm. And for me, that felt a little bit stretched out. I, I think there's quite a lot of filler conversations. It's quite hard to sensationalise a game, someone playing a game for 77 minutes. Yeah, true. You know, hey, listen, I'm giving it a big crutch this morning. I'm trying to give it a helping hand. <laughs> <laughs> not such a hard marker yeah. today <laughs> I, I wasn't disinterested um, but it's also not the best documentary I've ever seen and I've seen a lot of documentaries so I asked you at the, uh, the front of this um, if you were a gamer and obviously Sarah's a gamer you're not Sean and I kind of like dabbled I mean what do I know I just remember playing Samantha Fox's strip poker on the Spectrum 48 back in the 80s <laughs> I know nothing about arcade games apart from Space Invaders which is the one that everybody knows so it was quite nice to see people that were passionate about that um, but I just yeah I, it, it didn't grab me as well as it should I mean I quite like some of the styling some of it went a bit stranger things at one point you know it's funny you say a Spectrum because I had a Spectrum didn't you want a Commodore I always wanted a Commodore everybody else had one and I didn't and I, me- I remember this is like going way back like you know yeah all right steady slate. yeah don't go like, for- <laughs> <laughs> but like think about that, that original computer that you had to plug a cassette player into which was the ZX48 whatever ZX, whatever. And then it came with a cassette. And then my brother in law had an acorn. And then, like, you had the games like you were talking about. And everyone wanted a Commodore. And I had, a, and then I had a Spectrum. And then I had an Amiga. So I did used to play games, I guess. But I never did arcade games. And I don't do games like today where everyone's on their headphones and headsets. And like, that, that's Sarah. In, 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 like, <laughs> Literally, I <laughs> used these. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? I've got that. I've never been that. But I guess I did as a kid, you know, put the Spectrum cassette in and listen to the. You know, the music. Oh, I love that. (laughs) I got such a thrill from the connection sound. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, I don't know. And and I've been intrigued to understand why why the director chose Kim, like where that came from. Obviously, he's from Denmark. Like, what what drew him to Kim? What drew him to that? That's the question I would ask the director. Like, how does this even come about? Because people break records every day for silly things, right? Oh, I'm going to play with the skipping rope for two days right but what makes you make a documentary about it what makes you go there's something there and that's what i'm trying to unpack and i don't know why other than it's kind of a cute story so what do you play sarah now you're on on twitch what what games do you play um i play a lot of sort of solo story driven games i have like ps5 and i play on my pc um love a bit tomb raider like uncharted these sort of very much solo narrative games i really like story uh, I think that's from my film background. So I play a lot of those. And then I play a few online games, really. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm very um, much like newer consoles to you both. Like, I think my first one was a PS2, not yeah. to sort of age me. But um, <laughs> so, yeah, I've just sort of fallen in love with it, really. And the sort of the ability of, you know, certain games like Last of Us, like that is a great story. I'm not sure if you've played it, but those sort of things are sort of drew me back into gaming um, now, really. But yeah, I, I, I think just what you were saying, Sean, about um, Kim as a character, I think he was the most interesting thing about it. I mean, I loved his sort of quirkiness about yeah. it. I mean, I'm taken to him. I don't even know him, but I can see why the camera is fascinated with him. And I just loved his sort of humour and everything about it. And they sort of were able to capture that, you know, through those those jump cuts. There'd be like these really serious moments or and it would just contrast with Kim like just popping behind a machine or eating something. Um, I think that's why maybe the directors, I'm not sure if they are uh, Danish as well, but they, um, I think they saw a unique character and obviously this sort of goal they were trying to achieve uh, during this he was quite a character. He was quite charming. I was charmed to him. I, I agree with you because I, I think he was definitely the 
the center point for the film and you know, quite rightly too because i think the other friends were great you know as as i i suppose supporting cast but i think it is danish yeah the the uh the guy that did the film is also the guy that narrated it and that was another thing that um jarred for me a little bit the narration because it's very deadpan isn't it and i suppose it would have been yeah. just as awful for someone to be really hyper and really enthusiastic narrating but for me that yeah i, t- I didn't like the narration on this i kind of like that sort of uh european humor i like those sort of i like the dryness um there's lots of films i like that i I like just sort of how blunt people are in those you know uh danish films and other types of european films so it kind of worked for me oh yeah i like something a bit dry i'm with you sarah like often the things that aren't supposed to be funny the things that make me laugh in those kind of narrations that's the thing that I think is brilliant. The way things are delivered is just so matter of fact. There is quite a bit of tension, uh, but it, it really kicks in in the second half. And bear in mind, it's like 97 minutes. It, I suppose it's the last half an hour where you really see the competition or you see the challenge that he's undertaking. So, yeah, I suppose, that, you know, it was good that that wasn't throughout the whole film. Yeah, they're definitely waiting for you to sort of kick in. Like you say, uh, Phil, it just it, it is such a build-up. Oh, how long's left? Oh, we're only just getting to it now. Um, but I think it. They, I think their aim with this sort of uh, film is the, is the characters and the, the friendship group. Um, and if you take that away, you know, this could be done in <laughs> half an hour, this, this documentary. But it, it's about character and friends and family, you know, found family and interests. So I think... That's really the takeaway, regardless of whether he, you know, achieves this goal or not. Him being able to do this thing and being the best in the world at it is a little bit like everyone can have their 15 minutes. And he, this is Kim's 15 minutes. He is the best in the world at Gyrus. And it kind of just triumphs the ordinary bloke or the ordinary person to go, I can be the best in the world at something, you know. And it may be some of that greatness comes through is like this person who hangs out in our arcade is the best in the world at something in this tiny bit of in this tiny corner of Denmark that's the best person in the world that does this and maybe there's something about that that comes through and that I hadn't thought about that at the start of this conversation but just this conversation has triggered a brain cell to uh, to think about it I don't know also can you imagine playing a game for 49 hours like non-stop I mean you could see him because they were making toasties and they made they made a joke about that about how you know that did uh, did make them slip from concentration a little bit because everyone was like oh yeah the smell of the smell of toasties I want one and then you know you you see them preparing the box full of ginseng and multivitamins and almost like a little first aid kit you know and also drinking as well because they didn't want to get too too drunk but they wanted a few drinks and I just can't imagine Imagine just not having any rest because you would see him going to Kim going to lie down for like 15 minutes and then being woken up like every every so often because that game you know to, to beat the record he couldn't he couldn't be away from the game for for too long it's just like crazy and you'd see him like stepping out to go <laughs> go for a wee <laughs> I quite like God. those cutaways yeah I yeah me like too profile cutaways where he'd come through the door <laughs> I was just having a moment of calm. Do you remember what's going through your brain when you've stared at Gyrus for 40 hours? Like, when you close your eyes, you must just still see Gyrus. Yeah, because it's, like, in space and you're shooting, like, the opposition and it's everything is almost like a 3D picture in a way. Well, it is a 3D picture because you're imagining you're, you're there. And I suppose after a while, you would begin to think that you're actually in space. <laughs> and he did make a comment about how, you know, after a while he, he might see Godzilla like eating a bridge or something. Oh, I can't remember what he said, but it's like you would, you you would start to hallucinate surely after that long. I was just thinking about whether you played longer sets than 49 hours, Phil. I feel like you might have been a DJ set longer than 49 hours. <laughs> well, I don't think so, but it might be something something on the cards. I might be inspired. I'm going to come to you this week and say I've had this great idea for a film. <laughs> If the, right. and if the money's right. And if money's right, Phil, we're going to get you to DJ for 49 hours. And I'm going to be toasties. At my age, I can't manage two hours, let alone 49. What score do you normally give it out of? Five, ten? Five. I never normally give people the the option to halve their stars, but I think I will, because you're a special guest this time. Is that loud, Sean? One, no, that's really unfair. Anytime I'm like, can I have a half? You're like, no. So I'm sorry, Sarah. It's really unfair. Um, out of 10, I would give it 6 out of 10. Yeah, I think, I think there's some creativity there. I can't really 
knock the sort of the way it's filmed the editing the sort of the lighting's really cool music's good um i just think it was a bit too long and yeah. some of those character those other sort of supporting cast character arcs could have been cut down a little bit yeah yeah i completely agree and i'm giving it three stars which i suppose is six out of ten isn't it mm. it's the same cut fractions <laughs> oh across the board uh, no i'm not no hold on hold oh. on <laughs> I was, just, I was just doing your GCSE mathematics for you. No. Um, I knew that. I was just thinking, the other day I gave that Francois Ozon movie three stars, as you remember. And so I can't, in in good judgment, I can't give this three stars. It's, I can't. It's two. See, I was deliberating between two and three. I'm not changing my, my, <laughs> my verdict. But, yeah, I, I think if I... Had to say if I liked it more than I liked it less, I would say I liked it less probably. But it's a three. strong two. You know we do strong. It's a strong oh, yeah. two. Yeah, strong that's two a Seanism. That, that end of the two. <laughs> You're a hard marker. I am a hard marker. Sorry, everyone just gives. Oh, it's five. It's not five. It's a solid. <laughs> good I agree, two. Sean. I agree. <laughs> Ooh, are we getting? Are we getting a, ch- a change of heart from you, Sarah? Two stars now, is it? <laughs> really not intrigued at your star signs because I'm an Aries, so I just go, This is it. Two. What's your star sign, Phil? What are you, Sarah? I know you start Sarah. I was say, I'm Virgo, which is typically caring about other people. So I am as well. <gasps> I wonder why the two of you are deliberating then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe two out of five then, if I'm going out of fives. Yeah, that's not even fifty percent, is it? So two out of five. A strong two. I keep thinking of your strong two catchphrase, Sean. Strong two. <laughs> You're going for a strong two. That doesn't sound right, does it? I'm going for a number two. Sorry, I've just had a really, a really disgusting thought, so I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you do you. <laughs> there we go. So it's Canon Arm and the Arcade Quest. Um, it's out in cinemas from 24th, Friday 24th, and it's available digitally from Monday the 27th of June. We'll put everything down below, and we'll put all the links to Sarah. So go and watch her gaming on Twitch and what else was it you you're on youtube with your popcorn chat yeah twitter popcorn chat uh instagram as well i'm on instagram sarah's popcorn chat i hope we're following you on instagram i think we are yeah i think you are i mean if not i mean that'd be awkward but sort it out yeah very awkward it's been brilliant having you on thank you so much for being our fabulous guest hopefully you can come back and we can come back back soon horror horror no yeah no no (laughs) I'll come back, definitely. Thank you for having me on. You're very welcome. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Do your thang. And, yeah, do people still say that anymore? Do the kids still say, do your thang? Mm. Basement Jacks did, I'm sure, at one point. Or was that thing? That was early noughties, Phil. (laughs) Another cultural (laughs) reference for the kids. (laughs)